Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are so excited to have our friend here, Jamal Jones, joining us today. Central Valley Christian Council.com is the website. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me today. I'm excited to be here. Well, we are excited to have you here as well. There's so much to you and to what you do. Would you mind introducing yourself to our listeners to start? Sure. I am a husband, a, a father. Professionally, I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, entrepreneur, and motivational speaker. Beautiful. I know you also have a daughter, age six, first grade. Yes, yes. I have, I have a five and seven year old, two boys, <laughs> so that resonates. But I can tell you one thing right off the top. I love that Jamal identifies himself as a husband and a father first. That speaks volumes. A lot of people you ask about yourself, they all want to talk about their career and what they do. I'm the same way. I'm a mom. That's all I am. And then I have a job or two, but that's it. So I appreciate that. So therapist, motivational speaker, facilitator, and so much more. Do you tell us a little about your life journey and what brought you here? Well, I am originally from the Bay Area. Um, I was born in San Francisco. That's where my parents were raised. When I was still a, a child, my parents decided to move me and my four siblings to East Oakland. So I was born in San Francisco, raised in East Oakland, and I grew up in the Oakland Unified School District. And I've been living here in Fresno, California for 22 years now. I came to Fresno on a football scholarship uh, to Fresno State. And I just fell in love with the community and, did, and made it my home. Uh, my wife is also from the Valley, and she has strong ties to her family here as well. And over the course of my life and career, um, I, of course, I've been a student athlete. I played Division one football at Fresno State. And then I transitioned into full-time ministry with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And I was the football team chaplain for Fresno State football. Wow. And I did that for seven years before transitioning into mental health care. Amazing. Pretty fascinating. And I know you talk strictly about your mission and uh, to use your background as a former pastor and division one football uh, team chaplain, therapist, entrepreneur, motivational speaker to really start encouraging people and make the world a safer, happier place. Tell us about the definition of integrity. That word has come to mean a lot to me over the course of my life. When I was younger, I would think of integrity as being a person of your word. Um, I would think of integrity as what are you doing when no one else is looking? Um, but my favorite definition of integrity in my adult life has become being whole, complete, undivided. And as I have journeyed through my own life and engaged in a counseling profession, I've really come to realize that's really what most people want is many people are really frustrated or in some kind of distress because they feel like their life is kind of out of balance or not, not congruent with their core values and beliefs. And so I really believe that, that the ability to be integrous and to take every part of who we are as human beings, the good, the bad, the ugly, the things that, we, that we're most proud of and wanna post on social media, and the other parts that we're ashamed of, that we want to keep secret, take all, take, take all of it and bring it out into the open and make the best use of it. Uh, because the reality is no one's perfect. We all have our shortcomings, but we can actually take our limitations in our, in our so-called weaknesses, and those can also be used for good. And you're the son of a bivocational pastor, devout woman of faith. Could you tell us a little bit about your upbringing? Yes. Um, so my, my dad, when he married my mom 47 plus years ago, um, my dad came to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior through marrying my mom. My, my grandfather on my mom's side led my dad oh. to Christ. Um, and prior to that, my dad had his own life story. 
um, his own background, gr growing up without his biological father um, and other things in his family. But for my dad, that was a game changer, uh, marrying my mom. And for my mom, it was a game changer too, because she had a role in my dad's spiritual journey. So with me being the youngest of five kids, I have two older brothers, two older sisters. I was, I consider myself very fortunate to grow up in a home where, first of all, I had both of my parents. Um, growing up, I didn't realize how significant that was to have to live with both my biological father and mother and all of my siblings. Uh, but in addition to that, my dad and mom uh, passed their, they not only passed their faith down to me, but I actually saw them and I still see them to this day, role model their faith, uh, what it means to be to the best of their ability, an authentic uh, follower of Jesus Christ, not in a unhealthy, toxic, religious way, but in a going back to their integrity of they have a certain belief system that they adopted. And when I was 13, being exposed to that faith through prayer at home and in-home Bible studies and being exposed to activities throughout the church and outside the church. When I was 13, um, that's a critical point in most people's development, you know, you could, because you're entering adolescence and being in East Oakland, you kind of decide and you got to learn, you know, what are you going to stand for? What do you live for that you're willing to die for? Do you want to die for a block? Do you want to die for a certain gang? Do you want to die? For, you know, what do you live for? And so for me at 13, I said, you know, I want to live for Christ. Um, and that has kind of propelled me ever since. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing all this. And I know um, you provide individual marital counseling uh, for California residents, right? Um, mm -hmm. So do you do virtual work with them? Yes. And in person? Okay. Yes. My practice is a online practice. Um, I do have one client who I would consider to be the exception to the rule. I have an elderly client um, who is in a assisted living home um, and just out of pure love and compassion, um, this client and his family chose me as his therapist. And so he's elderly and he's African-American. And so it's with great joy and pleasure that I get to have a small commute uh, to go visit him in, in assisted living. But apart from that, all the rest of my clients are online virtually throughout California. Oh, great. And I know today you want to focus on specifically three different aspects. Your work as a Christian therapist, black therapist, motivational speaker. So let's start with you as a Christian therapist. In my work at mental health, um, you know, one of the things that we're constantly faced with and assessing for and intervening are things like depression and a sense of hopelessness, a deep sense of helplessness, uh, feelings of despair. In many cases, those feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, and despair can lead to thoughts of suicide, you know, where people can become so um, hopeless and just don't have the, they don't feel like they have the capacity or the strength to cope with life anymore. And they might come to their own conclusion that they're better off not living. And so mental health is a big aspect of it is about suicide awareness, uh, suicide prevention, uh, intervention. It's about the ability of us as healthcare providers to instill a greater sense of healing and hope. Um, and in my journey as a professional counselor, I discovered that there are a lot of people who go to counseling and if they could choose for themselves, they would prefer to have a counselor who they feel is like-minded and some fundamental beliefs about who God is, who Jesus is, what is the Bible and what does it stand for? And not to turn the sessions into a Bible study um, or to make the sessions overly religious, but one of the keys to progress and good outcomes in therapy is the relationship. And many people are more comfortable engaging in this therapeutic relationship when they feel like they can identify with a person 
And so I decided that I would go ahead and begin to build a Christian-based practice, not to exclude any other faith or any other belief systems, but to make it easier for those folks who are looking for a Christian therapist to actually locate one. Got it. And by the way, let's just remind our listeners how we can reach out to you specifically, phone number, website, social media. Would you mind sharing? (laughs) Yes. My business line is area code 559-242-9319. That's 559-242-9319. You can also email me at my first name, which is spelled J-A-M-A-L, at centralvalleychristiancouncil.com. And that is uh, Jamal at centralvalleychristiancouncil.com. And council is spelled C-O-U-N-S-E-L. And that's also the website that you can go to. Again, Central Valley Christian Council.com is the website. All right, great. So what other aspect of your work did you want to share? I'm also a black man. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I love people of, of every ethnicity, um, race and culture. Um, I have many different people on my caseload throughout the course of the year and on the life that I work with. Um, but to be an African-American man um, is its own experience in and of itself. And I'm sure it's well noted and documented about different challenges that's faced in the Black community. And so I just, I just think it's important for me as a 40-year-old um, African-American man who grew up in East Oakland and who was fortunate to, act, to have opportunity to go to a four-year college at Fresno State on a football scholarship. That scholarship laid the foundation for me to go back to graduate school for a master's degree and counseling, marriage, family, and child therapy. Um, but it, there are some things that we struggle with within the, Af- within the African American community, particularly as black men. Um, and so I also advertise myself as a black therapist uh, for those individuals who would feel more comfortable engaging in that therapeutic relationship with someone of the same ethnicity and culture. Beautiful. Absolutely. There's a lot to be said for that. And um, I commend you. And I know the struggles that you've been through. I have many African American friends, and uh, we bond over so much. And I really can empathize. I mean, everyone has their own set of but what so many of you have been through, and then you're looking at the news, and then the riots, and this that's all been happening, you know, over the, the the course of the how many years now it's just it's a lot to deal with so I agree with you it's good to be able to empathize with someone who's gone through what you've gone through what you go through and um I commend you on that my goodness yeah thank you um oftentimes in a black community we're taught we are very strong and resilient Uh, many are people of faith not only Christianity but um, Islam and other faiths of their choice But the point I'm getting at is um, the African-American race and African-American men are very resilient people, very strong people who have overcome a lot, as you've indicated. And sometimes um, that can be a barrier to actually asking for help. And so message to anybody listening, I don't care what race you are, um, because again, life is hard in general and we all have adversities that we face. But if you're that uh, kind of personality who is kind of a go-getter or you kind of want to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps or you're that person that's very dependable and you got so many family, staff or friends depending on you, I just want to remind you that asking for help um, is a sign of strength. Um, Asking for help is a sign of humility. And because of who you are, as a black man, as a black woman, as a professional, as a Christian, again, whoever you are, because of who you are and your track record of being so dependable, it's okay for you to kind of take a step back and ask for help so that other people can be there for you. And that's one of the greatest joys that I get out of being 
a professional therapist is I get to provide a space where people can come in private and confidentiality and in essence, let their hair down, let their guards down, be transparent and vulnerable so that they can leave those sessions and then show up for their children and their families and their jobs as their authentic selves. Well, let's also discuss um, a little about the type of um, things you can help people with. Um, let me just ask you, it's been a difficult two and a half years with this pandemic. It's brought a lot of anxiety. It's brought a lot of stress. It's brought a lot of heartache, loss, um, job change, career change, juggling children. I mean, how have you noticed this pandemic affecting you personally and, of course, the people you're working with? Life transitions, um, whether it's the economic crisis of 07, 08, um, or in this case, we're coping with a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic. Um, life in and of itself is full of transitions. And some of those transitions are more pleasant than others. Um, so one thing I'm constantly reminding people of is that change is a process. Um, change is normal. Um, sometimes there's grief that comes along with change. Um, for example, if you're changing a job or changing a career, there's going to be some missed memories and some missed relationships. And there's going to be some fear with leaving one place that, that, that you're familiar with, that you, feel, that you feel secure in, and going to a completely new environment. Um, so life transitions, um, anxiety, and learning how to cope with it in a way that's healthy and productive. Anxiety in and of itself is not a bad thing. Anxiety is part of being human. Uh, it's designed to help us protect ourselves. It's designed to help us enhance our performance. Um, however, when it becomes excessive, that's when it can be become detrimental to our mental health and well-being. Um, and I can go on and on about um, the grief and the loss. You know, sometimes as people, when life is busy with life and with work and with family and you're, and you're trying to survive, you don't actually pause and give yourself time to not just go to a funeral service. And during the pandemic, not, not everybody had the opportunity for closure yeah. by way of a service. But if you're somebody who has lost a family member um, or a friend or a colleague or even several, um, I encourage you to whatever it might look like for you to actually give yourself permission um, to grieve. Give yourself permission to cry. And if you find that in that process of grieving and crying that some, some anger comes up, because you're angry about what happened, you're angry about circumstances out of your control, it's okay to feel that way. Um, that anger is good for you, it's healthy. Again, as long as it's, you're gonna channel it in a healthy and productive way. Uh, oftentimes in counseling, what comes up is unresolved grief. Yeah. Um, unresolved trauma. Mm -hmm. um, unresolved issues of the past, even though somebody might come to a, a professional counselor and they might present with um, a work situation or a relationship problem. As they get deeper into the conversation, they begin to bring up things, uh, people, events, circumstances from their past that are linked to their current situation. So therapy and counseling does not have to be about going back into your childhood or back into your adolescence. Some people do prefer what's called being more present-minded and future-oriented in therapy. At the same time, when you find unresolved issues from your past spilling over into your present moment, that's a sign uh, that you might wanna have some healthy closure to those things. Mm -hmm. And I'll stop there because I could probably go on forever talking about this stuff, Joe. So no, you guys, it's okay. We still have we still have a, oh. a six seven minutes, so we're good. We're okay. good. What else do you want to share about you and your services? 
I'm also a motivational speaker. Yeah. Um, that's one skill that I've developed over the course of my life that goes back to being raised in a home where, my, where seeing my dad um, and mom do a lot, a lot of public speaking. And not everybody can access or are motivated to access therapy or can afford therapy. And so for me, motivational speaking is another avenue where I can add value to the world, where I can bring healing and hope by way of uh, speaking. So if, if you are part of an organization, whether it's a school or a business or a church or some other, um, any other organization or program, and you're looking for a motivational speaker, feel free to go to my website and read about my background in more detail. And I'll be happy to p- provide that service. Beautiful. There's so much to you and what you have to offer. My goodness. And if someone out there today is uh, listening or watching and wants to reach out to you, I uh, just want to bring up the website again. It's Central Valley Christian Council.com. Perfect. Good to know. And, um, you know, what would you say? To, you know, we talked a little about mental health, uh, but it, mental health is huge. And a lot of us are suffering with mental health issues and not just May's Mental Health Awareness Month. It's every month. Is there anything mm-hmm. that you want to maybe touch upon with mental health specifically for us today, too? Your mental health plays a vital role in every aspect of your life. Your mental health uh, is an essential part of your self-care. So in the same way that you might have your own primary care physician, or you might have a certain person that you have as a car mechanic, or you might have your regular dentist that you go for your maintenance on your teeth. Um, If you don't already, I would encourage you to find a mental health professional or professional counselor that can be part of your regular self-care plan. Um, You don't have to wait until you're in crisis or you're in an emergency to do what's called preventative work, right? If you wait until you got a cavity, um, it's gonna be a lot more expensive to take care of your teeth. Um, So mental health is a daily priority. It's a huge part of your self-care. It's okay to ask for help. And you, because you're in counseling, that does not mean that you're crazy or weak. Mm-hmm. So true. And mental health, obviously. And, you know, a lot of times people put people down because of mental health. But I just love the fact that it's becoming more mainstream a lot of people mm-hmm. open up talking mm-hmm. about it and it's i think it's a good thing because so many people suffer in, in so many different ways um can i ask you who is the biggest mentor in in your life who brought you here would you say i definitely have to say my parents um my dad and mom are the greatest influences in my life and i'm grateful that they um introduced me to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, because what that has done for me is um, it has given me a faith that I can genuinely believe in that serves me as a a guide and a compass. Uh, My faith informs every aspect of my life, how I think and how I respond, Um, not perfectly, but again, in trying to be healthy and productive. So I'm grateful for my dad uh, and my mom and my four siblings um, again, to be a African American male uh, who grew up in East Oakland in an intact family, knowing what I know today, um, I'm just really, really grateful for the, for that um, privilege uh, and opportunity. And I also um, I have other influences in my life, um, different people who have mentored me over the years different coaches I've played for who have been big influences in my life. Um, Life is a team sport. And the older we get, the more intentional we want to be about building our own support system that's healthy and productive. Yep. And uh, we are just about out of time with two minutes left on the clock. Um, Did you want to share something else in particular? Um, I know you you also had a little bit of an inspirational quote that maybe you wanted to share for us. 
very common verse out of the Bible, uh, Jeremiah 2911 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans mm -hmm. to give you a hope in the future. So no matter, no matter who you are or what you're going through, if you believe in a higher power, um, I do believe in a higher power who has plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Uh, he wants to give you a hope in the future. And so if you have lost confidence, if you've lost hope, um, believe in yourself as much yeah. as this higher power believes in you and you'll be amazed what happens. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Jamal. Please tell us again how we can reach out to you. My business line is 559-242-9319. Website is Central Valley Christian Council.com and council is spelled C O U N S E L. And my email address is Jamal, J A M A L, at Central Valley Christian Council.com. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you here on the show today. Uh, we appreciate you. And to all of our listeners and viewers, we appreciate you as well. Stay tuned. More of the show's coming up right after the break. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.